the hex head on the end. You gonna focus for me or are you just gonna stay like that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's get to it. So what do you need if you're going to do this exactly like me? Now there are some other ways to do it I'm sure, but this is how I did it. Uh, obviously a funnel to refill it. I used four quarts. Well I used 3.5 quarts. Uh, good news is that it was 3.5 exactly so the next time I only have to buy three and I have to buy four. Um, a 5 eighths socket with a, a ratchet. This pot because that oil pan did not fit underneath it. I used a screwdriver and a hammer to get the old filter off. I'm not going to need that next time because the K&N filter has a little uh, the um, bolt head at the top of it. So let me tell you a little trick about some of this stuff. I bought it at Advanced Auto. If you search for your, if you have a 2011, if you search for that on the Advanced Auto Parts website, the only option is a 96 inch motor. 2011 was the first year with 103 and it was optional. Just know that this KN171C or 171B, if you want black, that is the filter for all 103 inch motors by KN. What I did first was uh, I let the, brought it out here, let the bike run for about five minutes, got the oil you know, nice and run, warm running through there. I bought this little thing here, and because uh, I don't have one, I haven't changed my own oil in a long time, especially on a motorcycle, as I mentioned before. And somebody on, on uh, YouTube that I'd watched said, gave fair warning that this would not fit under here. And uh, and uh, I said, ah, surely there's gotta be enough room. And what he recommended was a little pot, like a regular pot. So that's what we're gonna use for this because he's absolutely right. I'm gonna get this thing out of the way. That's ugly. All right, so underneath here. So underneath the bike, you have two bolts. Come on, focus. There we go. This is the one. That's the one that you're going to take off. Um, it is a oh, camera. 5 8 wrench. We're going to use box in wrench. Man, this thing is trying to. There we go. It is a 5 8 wrench that we're going to use to pull that little bolt out of there. Uh, I'm not going to be able to fit the pot under there and take that out at the same time, so I might have a little bit of a, a spillage on the driveway. We're gonna see if we do. I'd hate to have oil everywhere, but shh, don't tell nobody. Using a, uh, I actually ended up using a 5 8 socket instead of the uh, combination wrench. Uh, this is a Craftsman wrench. The box end, the, uh, well, it's not gonna focus on me, but the, the box end there was a little bit too, the edges were a little bit too thick to actually fit between um, the motor and the bolt, so. This guy here is a, it's a cheaper socket but on a Craftsman ratchet, so that worked out pretty well. And if we can see in there, she is almost done draining out. I didn't make too much of a mess actually. So I've got some cat litter. We're gonna put that cat litter down there, clean that up. Not bad. Uh, out of it. This is magnetic, so uh, it should catch any grinding shavings off the inside and um, this one's pretty clean really so I'm pretty happy with that of course it doesn't want to focus right but we're gonna clean that up and put it back in I'm gonna do the filter here's what I don't like you can get the uh, Harley Davidson filter wrench I think it's about 20 bucks I didn't really price it but um, I'm gonna show you here in a minute why I like the K&N filters better than the Harley Davidson filters but uh, to get that wrench in there you've got to really finagle it uh, to put it on there in my opinion compared to what's necessary so we're going to drive this uh, screwdriver in through the body most people who have done oil changes of any kind are familiar with this uh, technique we've done it on cars we've done a little bit on everything but we're going to get that in there and then we'll come right back all right we use the screwdriver pounded it in a little flathead screwdriver pounded it in with a little sledgehammer it only took a couple hits to get it in don't forget to put your pan underneath there move it back from where you did the uh, drain plug I'm letting it drip a little bit before I take it all the way off because I found a nice little sweet spot that lets the oil drain you can see the stream right there in that little clear daylight spot 
I found a nice little sweet spot where it'll go through and not touch anything on the motorcycle. It's going straight to the pan. Something I really like about these K&M filters, and this is what I was alluding to earlier, focus, stay with me, is that they have the, the, uh, the hex head. I'm only gonna put this thing on hand tight, or not even like fully, fully all the way down hand tight. I gotta hold this thing away, the fuck, this is driving me fucking crazy. Uh, but, you know, overheat, or over time the heat expands things, it might make it tighter, so it's gonna be way easier to get that off using a, a, a socket and a ratchet than it would be to, to go get that filter wrench, which is something I, I don't really wanna go buy. So now what we're gonna do, I've got, it's already got this little coating on there, but old habits die hard, right? So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this oil. You all know this trick too. Kind of just, just a little small thin coating around the edge, around that gasket. It just makes it a lot easier to get off when the time comes later. Next to the last step, I'm using this Mobile One V-Twin Full Synthetic 20W50 oil. It's made for these types of engines that are air-cooled. Oh, now it wants to focus. Thanks. Thanks. And uh, all we're going to do is dump it down in that funnel there. We're going to start with 3.5 quarts first. Uh, start the engine up, let everything get through there, check the level, and we'll be good to go. All right, so we got uh, the oil drain, the filter changed. We got three and a half quarts of Mobile One V-Twin 20W50 in. Let's start it up and let it get warmed up and then we'll check the oil levels. I pointed out earlier, uh, this right here is your dipstick. I know it might be common sense to a lot of people, but this is for the benefit of folks who don't know it. Uh, I just checked it, everything's good. I didn't want to show the dipstick, one, because I only have two hands, and uh, two, I didn't want to leave that hole open any longer than I wanted to, but or than I needed to. Uh, two important notes. Uh, one, take the dipstick out, wipe it off, stick it back in, and then check it that way. The other note, this is important, it'll say on there, check it screwed in. So don't just put it in there, pull it out, and check it. You have to screw it in and then unscrew it to get to the level. So exactly uh, 3.5 quarts. So then now I have this big old mess. What am I gonna do with that? Well, I'm simply gonna pour it into there, uh, get that all cleaned up, take it down to the local auto parts shop, dispose of it, and then we are good to go. We'll give it a test ride. I got some kitty litter, I'm gonna get that mess. Again, it's a very small mess considering I had to uh, take the screw or the bolt out without having the, uh, the pot underneath it, so we're good to go. So thanks for coming along today on this uh, oil change. It's a simple thing to do, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. So now it's time to uh, clean everything up, and then I'm going to go for a ride. See you later.